This video will provide step-by-step -step instructions for modeling engineered geology such as landfills, mine waste, and coal ash deposits. A closed municipal landfill south of Golden, Colorado will be used as a case study to demonstrate the recommended steps. As always, acquiring, importing, hand entering, and checking the data is the most time consuming and boring part, so we'll try to blast through it knowing that you can always pause and rewind the video. We'll start with creating a new project by entering the project name. Next, we select the coordinate system and the measurement units. Enter or import the borehole IDs and location coordinates. Set the project dimensions and use the Google Earth button to visually check the project dimensions and coordinate system. Extract a USGS GeoTIFF by navigating your web browser to the web address shown below and zoom into the area of interest. Use the Extent option to draw a rectangle around the project area. Select the 1 meter DEM option. Click the Search Products button. Select the most recent file and click on the Download Link option. Once the GeoTIFF file has downloaded, use the ModOps Grid Import tool to convert it into a RockWorks grid. Extract a site image from Google Earth. Use the Graphics Images Georeference program to crop the Google Earth image to the project dimensions and set it as the project image. Now, use the Google Earth Polygon tool to define the perimeter of the landfill. Copy the polygon to the Windows clipboard. Use the Datasheet File Import Google Earth Single Polygon tool to save the landfill perimeter as a table within the borehole database. Define the stratigraphy types. Enter or import the borehole stratigraphy data. When defining the lithology types, we would normally just include the lithologies that will be encountered, but in this case study, we're going to eventually merge the stratigraphy and lithology models into a single geology model. As a consequence, the lithology table will include all of the strata types as well as their order or G value numbers. Now, Enter or import the borehole lithology data. Next, we'll need to create professional judgment or imaginary boreholes around the perimeter of the landfill. These PJ boreholes will force stratigraphic units within the subsequent modeling to converge and pinch out at the edges of the landfill. Professional judgment boreholes can be most easily added by digitizing their locations within Google Earth as points along the landfill perimeter. Be sure to assign unique names to these points and to group them within the same folder. Upon completion, copy the folder that contains the PJ points to the Windows clipboard. 
Start a new RockWorks datasheet and select the File Import Google Earth XYZ Coordinates option. Select Windows Clipboard as the input, the coordinate system that's being used for the project, and the units. Press Continue and the data will be converted to the specified output coordinates and copied into the RockWorks datasheet. Now, We'll convert this data to imaginary boreholes by selecting the Datasheet File Transfer Locations to Borehole Manager option. This program requires that we define how the columns within the datasheet will be mapped to the fields within the borehole database. The borehole name, easting, northing, and elevation are required. Everything else is optional. The PJ, or Professional Judgment Borehole IDs, and XY locations have now been added to the borehole database. Note that the borehole elevations and TDs are set to zero. We'll address this later on. Now, we need to populate the stratigraphy tabs for all of the Professional Judgment Boreholes so that the grid models will be projected to these pinch points. Enter minimum thicknesses for all of the units except for the fill unit. We'll set the fill to a zero thickness so that it pinches out at the PJ points. To avoid retyping these depths for all of the other PJ points, click on the datasheet button for the first PJ point and select the Copy All option. Then, select the next PJ hole, click on its datasheet option, and paste the clipboard contents. Repeat this process for the remaining PJ points. Next, we'll set all of the borehole collar elevations based on the USGS GeoTIFF DEM that was previously extracted. This is accomplished by using the Borehole Manager Edit Adjust Elevations from Grid tool. Next, the total depths are adjusted by selecting the Borehole Manager Edit Adjust TDS tool. Okay, that's it for the ugly data entry part. Now it's time to start making diagrams and creating models. But first, we want to point out that some of the preceding steps and all of the following steps have been automated via a playlist. If you'd like a copy of this playlist to use as a template for processing your own data, just send an email to support at rockware.com. We'll start by creating a 3D diagram depicting strip logs with a semi-transparent draped satellite image. Next, select the Borehole Operations Stratigraphy Layered Model option. This program will create grid models for the top and base of every unit within the Stratigraphy Types table. Later on, we'll be using two of these grids to constrain the lithology modeling, specifically the base of the clay cap and the top of the clay liner. We're also going to be using the layered stratigraphy model to create a solid model that will be subsequently merged within the lithology model to create a geologic model. We'll be using the triangulation algorithm for interpolating the grid models because the surfaces have been engineered in a beveled fashion. The result is a layered stratigraphy model. We're not done yet because this model doesn't show the clay lenses within the fill. In addition to creating the layered grid model, the previous step also created a block model. This will come into play after we've created the lithology model. Now, let's model the lithology data. 
This is just the material within the fill consisting of trash and laterally discontinuous clay lenses. Notice how the lithology model will be constrained between the base of the clay cap and the top of the clay liner. Now, if we hide everything except for the clay lenses, vertically exaggerate the model by a factor of 8, and look at the model from the side, the clay lenses become quite obvious. Finally, we use the ModOps Solid Filters Replace Node Values program to merge the stratigraphy and lithology models into a geology model. This program will replace the voxels within the stratigraphy block model with the non-null voxels from the lithology block model. Once the geology model has been displayed, we can create a reveal animation, which will progressively slice away at the margins of the model, providing a thorough look at what's inside. Fence diagrams also provide a useful tool for looking inside the model. Cross sections are probably the most useful tool when working in the field to coordinate excavations. Although not as pretty, the volumetric reports can be quite useful. In this example, we're listing the volume of every unit at 10-foot intervals, with grand totals at the base of each column. The aforementioned playlist provides a way to regenerate all of the models and diagrams with a single mouse click if any of the data changes or if new data becomes available.